This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me and thanks to Kate for filling in last week. We start today's show with the auto industry seemingly backpedalling on many promises it's made on EVs. After last week, when Kate told you Chevrolet and Ford were delaying some of their EV production goals and plans, we've had other automakers jump on board this week with similar messages. Midweek, Volkswagen announced further layoffs at its software development subsidiary CarID, warning that its Porsche Macan EV will be delayed until next year as a result. Sharing the same platform, the Audi Q6 e-tron will also be delayed until next year. General Motors and Volkswagen also announced delays to new battery production facilities this week, and we can expect more bad news this coming week. Why is this happening? Luckily, we made a video on that very topic that went live this week, so you'll find a link below. Tesla's still on track to deliver its first Cybertrucks to a few lucky reservation holders at the end of this month, but so far we've still not been given much in the way of final specifications. Making his now semi-regular appearance on the Joe Rogan show this week, however, dressed in garb that he described as being, quote, half-dressed as the Wizard of Australia, while smoking a cigar and drinking bourbon, Elon Musk was asked about the weight of the Cybertrucks truck and said, quote, it depends on the configuration, but it's about, I don't know, about 7,000 pounds, end quote. Despite that, Elon Musk said that Tesla is still aiming to get the truck's sprint time to below three seconds when in what he said was, quote, beast mode. The Tesla began a lottery this week for shareholders to win tickets to the November 30th delivery event. The strike between the UAW and the three main automakers in Detroit, Ford, General Motors and Stellantis, appears to be at an end. While the UAW came to tentative agreements with General Motors earlier this week, the last of the three automakers to agree on a path forward, not all union members have officially voted on the new contract terms and... At the time of filming, early indications are that union members who have voted thus far are overwhelmingly in support of said deals. The deals will span the next four and a half years and include a 25% wage increase for most workers and, in the case of General Motors, see its Ultium facilities become unionised. After the deals were reached, the UAW has stated it intends to campaign for better working conditions at non-union automakers. That includes includes Tesla. A first-of-its-kind civil lawsuit against Tesla and its semi-autonomous driver assistance system has come to a close in California this week, with the jury ruling 9-3 in Tesla's favour. It revolved around a 2019 crash involving a Tesla Model 3 in LA, which appeared to veer off the highway at 65 miles per hour, hit a palm tree and burst into flames. The driver was killed along with an eight-year-old child occupant. Two passengers survived and they, along with the estate of the driver, have sought $400 million plus punitive damages for the incident, alleging that Tesla knew its autopilot system was, quote, defective when it sold the car. Tesla, however, has denied liability and noted that the driver had alcohol in his blood at the time of the accident. This case will undoubtedly be cited in future civil cases against the automaker. Toyota has been sending mixed messages on EV plans this week, announcing that it would be investing $8 billion in a new battery production facility in North Carolina, USA. The very next day, it then lessened its EV sales predictions for the year. Posting a press release on Tuesday, Toyota says it will funnel an additional eight billion US dollars into its North Carolina battery manufacturing facility, which brings its total investment in the site to thirteen billion dollars. But a significant amount of those batteries will end up in hybrids and plug-in hybrids rather than just EVs. Toyota says that when the facility is fully operational, it will produce upwards of thirty gigawatt hours of battery cells per year. 
The very next day, however, Toyota announced a 40% slash in its EV sales goals for the year, stating that it would be leaning into hybrids to quote avoid the price competition end quote in the EV market. So far, Ford's massive F-150 Lightning pickup truck has been available to buy in the U.S. and Canada, with limited sales in Norway announced back in April. Now, Ford has added a second European nation to the places you can buy an F-150 Lightning, confirming that it's opened the order books in Switzerland. Like sales in Norway, Ford says volumes in Switzerland will be limited, but for those in Europe desperate to get one with deep enough pockets, it does make it easier. Easier to find one to buy. Meanwhile, back in North America, there are rumors flying suggesting that Ford is about to dramatically ramp up the price of the F-150 Lightning family for the 2024 model year, somewhere between two and nine thousand U.S. dollars, depending on the model. At the time of filming, Ford has yet to confirm or deny the rumors. What has been confirmed, however, is the launch price of the new Chevrolet Equinox EV, which GM confirmed this week will go on sale early next year. While it had originally promised the Equinox EV would launch in late 2023 with a sticker price of around thirty thousand U.S. dollars, this week we learned that the entry-level Equinox EV will now not launch until the end of next year and come with a sticker price closer to thirty-five thousand U.S. US dollars before incentives, but there is some good news. While the only model to launch right now will cost you closer to forty-nine thousand US dollars, with a range of three hundred and nineteen miles or five hundred and thirteen kilometers, that promised entry-level model due late next year will have a similar range per charge, higher than the originally promised two hundred and fifty miles, four hundred and two kilometers per charge. The path to a cleaner, greener, safer, smarter, and more equitable transportation landscape doesn't just mean seeing more choice in the marketplace, but it also means more affordability. And part of that revolves around being able to leverage economies of scale and hit high production volumes. This week, Chinese battery specialist CATL managed to take the next steps towards that by beginning operations at its latest battery production facility. It's a Massive campus where it says a new battery cell rolls off the production line every single second, and a new battery pack drops off the line every three minutes. While we don't have any footage of the new facility, you're seeing some stock footage from Cattle's older production lines here. The finished facility, one half is still under construction, will be capable of producing 60 gigawatt hours of battery cells per year. Following on from the announcements from most major automakers that they were slowing down their electric vehicle push, Hertz has announced that it too will be scaling back its EV plans. Announced on Monday, Hertz CEO said during the company's Q3 earnings call that while it is still committed to adopting an electric fleet, the company's transition will take far longer than originally anticipated, blaming higher repair costs for EVs and the fact that Tesla. Has dramatically dropped its retail prices, which in turn have affected the resale value of vehicles sold at the end of their time on the Hertz's fleet. The company's Q3 earnings were significantly lower than Wall Street had hoped. One interesting fact, though, is that Hertz says it's working with Tesla to effectively neuter the performance of Teslas on its fleet, as it says that factor is impacting accident rates. Our last story for this segment is one from a few weeks ago that slipped through the cracks. The official launch of Citroen's all-electric E C3 in Europe, fitted with a 44 kilowatt-hour battery pack and 100 kilowatt DC quick charging, the compact hatch is going on sale in European markets from 23,300 euros, putting it squarely into a marketplace and price point dominated by Chinese imports, but with an 83 kilowatt. What motor? 11 second sprint time in a range of up to 199 miles, 320 kilometers on the overly optimistic WLTP test cycle. It's going to be a great EV for many. There's no news yet on if it's coming to Altera, but as always, we are going to keep our ears to the ground and let you know if it does. The petrol version is on sale, so we have to assume yes. Before we get to the last two stories, I've got a quick question for you: Would you like to win an EV for a month? 
Sure you would. So I'm going to let Gav explain everything. This is the all new MG4. It's electric, which means it's fun to drive, it's quick, and it costs next to nothing to run. And you can get your hands on the fancy Essence version of this car for a full month. So if you want a break from paying petrol bills or you just want to drive something fun, head to ecotricity.co.nz and enter your name in to win. Seriously, you're going to love this thing, so good luck. Thanks, Gav, and don't forget to get your entry in today. Ultraviolet, the Indian motorcycle company responsible for the F77, has had quite a busy year, setting new records and increasing its sales volumes across India. And now it's time for the last two stories. Ultraviolet, the Indian motorcycle company responsible for the F77, has had a busy year, setting new records and increasing its sales volumes across India. This week, it confirmed it's bringing the F-77 to Europe for the first time, with a planned international debut to take place at the EICMA this month in Italy. With Street Fighter looks, the F-77 doesn't look like an electric motorcycle from a distance, and I suspect its 30 kilowatt motor will impress many riders. And if that isn't enough, Indian YouTuber Bike With Girl completed quite the publicity stunt last month that is attaching a lot of attention. Towing first a car, then a bus, then a truck, then a bus and a truck with her Ultra Violet F77. Sadly, we've not yet received permission to include her video in this roundup, but we still think it's well worth going and checking out. Think the F150 Lightning towing a train thing, but with a motorcycle instead. And finally, in case you didn't know, it was Halloween this week and my birthday the day after, and that apparently put plenty of people into the Halloween spirit. And while I've personally left Miss Queenie Dearheart off your screen this year, I know many of you would love me to bring her back out to give the news. Both Rivian and Mercedes-Benz have been getting into the spooky spirit. Rivian published an update this week for its vehicles that included a special spooky Halloween light show and an in-car dash readout that replaced pedestrians with zombies, while the Mercedes-Benz AMG EQE SUV yes, that's its name, that we've got this week on review, posted a very fancy Happy Halloween on its dashboard, complete with jack-o'-lanterns for the whole of October 31st. OK, it's not to everyone's tastes, but hey, a little harmless fun never hurt anyone. Certainly less than all that sugar. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it is time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. And if you don't... I'll send Miss Dearheart on to you. I'll be back soon with more great content. But in the meantime, don't forget that we make content every week. And do remember to check in regularly for the latest videos from Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge on this channel. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.